Hello, welcome. My name is Monero from Qatar Studios. Today, I'm going to teach you how to transition and organize your PC workspace from this to this. Okay, so in this lesson, I'm going to teach you everything I do on organizing my desktop to make sure I find everything the place I want them to be. So this is just like in real life. You see when you walk into a dating room, it's very difficult for you to have an organized mind. But when, when you walk into a very clean environment, it becomes easier for your mind to be less cluttered. So this applied to creatives is actually a problem. So you see many people having desktop icon all over the desktop environment. This doesn't make any sense because it makes it difficult for you to find when your mind is trying to pick on which file, which PSD file, the AI file, where they locate their names and trying to figure out all of those things. There is a lot rumbling in your brain. So to reduce those clutter, we need to organize our content based on folders and not just organizing them, also making them stay in places or in an environment with a widget that makes it easier for us to locate these files in just a single click. I hope you understand that. So today we're going to learn about the tool called Rocket Doc. Okay. So this tool, I've been using it for a couple of years, about seven to eight or 10 years now. It's been an old tool, though they have not gotten any updates because I don't even think they need any updates. The styling is left for you to handle. So I'm going to teach you how to use this tool. I'll be providing you the link to the website for this tool and also providing you the icons I use personally in case you want to use it. Also guiding you how to get your own icons, then taking you through on basic settings. First of all, I would like you to do a basic organization of your content. So what this simply means is that you need to place all your files in folders that they should be designated to. So for instance, we get into this folder. We, I have my mind file. Usually I have an extra hard disk, as you can see from here, I have my uh, main PC hard disk. So in case this is infected with virus, my files are in this. So what I do when I buy a PC, I have the main hard disk, which is usually SSD, standard state drive. And I have another one, which is HDD, which is hard disk, disk drive. So the hard disk drive is where all my files stay. So in case I have a virus infecting this particular drive or my operating system have an issue or crashes or something like that happens, something bad happens, I just have to format this and then import all my files back again, continue from where I stopped. So if you get into the local disk, you're going to see all installations here. But when you get into this external file, you're going to see all of my extra files that are not yet installed in the desk in, the, in this particular PC. Okay. Now, what this means is that I have to interface and I don't need to bother myself putting on content here. All these contents you see here are being placed inside of the local disk. So at the end of every day or at the end of every week, I usually pick all of the files that are cluttered in desktop and place them in the folders where I designated them to. And this is the first guideline I need to give you before you start doing this. So first of all, organize yourself, organize your content. Let me show you how the organized work feels like. Okay, so let's just explore this and let me expand this a little more. I think uh, let's use an open space. Okay, so now we have this file. It's the name. Mine is just like home. Okay, where all my files are. Now, the first one I have are design. I have the second one mockup. When you get into mockup, you're going to see two types of mockup brand mockup and website mockup. So, I have brand identity design mockup and website mockup. When you get into brand identity design mockups, you're going to find all brand identity design mockup. And how I organize this is that each mockup have an image representing it. So, it's easy for me to now find each mockup without reading the name. So, easily I can understand that this particular mockup is this one. I double click on it and modify. I understand that this one is actually this one and this one is actually this one. I hope you understand that. The best thing you need to do is what? Name the mockup image the same name you named the mockup file in PSD. That's one thing. And if you're wondering how I got the name P JPG, knowing the name of my uh, file extension, this is .psd, this is .jpg, let me show you how to do that very quickly. Okay, so in case you want to know okay, this, if this is PSD, if this is JPG, because sometimes you might want to download some images and you end up finding out that those images are actually JPG, PNG, whereas you are looking for JPG or JPG, whereas you are looking for PNG. So why downloading it should, should show you the extension before you even start downloading. Let me show you how to do that. 
So get into your windows. Let's minimize this. Get into your windows and let me expand this so you can see very clearly. When you get into your windows, you will need to click on view at the top left, okay? On different devices, different windows for Windows 11 is different. Click on view and you're gonna see this option elements from here. You can click on that option element. And from here, you need to click on view. Let me zoom closely, okay? Now you click on view, scroll down until you see hide extension for known file. So you have to untick this. When this is ticked and we apply it, Let's get back to the file which we actually see the, the extension. You see, now we just have the name. It doesn't have the extension. Now, this is good if you are doing something outside design. But if you are a designer, you need to know the extension. Like this is cleaner, I know. But as a designer, you need the extension so you know exactly what you are actually clicking on. You know the file extension. For instance, there are cases where this icon might not propagate based on the fact that you have not assigned them to the latest Photoshop you have installed. So in that case, you will still be able to know because this will be like a white paper. You will still be able to know that this is a PSD file without you uh, trying to figure that out in uh, a time-wasting manner now this is actually how to do it just hide file extension for known file type okay disable that untick that and click on okay and by the way some people when you click on windows to open your windows it takes you to a folder that looks like something i don't even know looks like something like this quick access no when you come into this same place make sure you select on this quick assets and enable just window those two, these two things are what you need to do one in general enable for pc second in, in uh, uh, view you disable for known file extension. Apply the settings and you are good to go. So we are go done with the first step and we are good to go. Okay, so you understand the trick behind that one. So that is how I organized my mockups. Then I come to my PSD PDF file. Here is where I, I plug in all my PDF file. Now, if you have multiple PDF file for your website proposal, your contracts for for uh, uh, for invoicing, receipts, quotations, and all of that, you can plug all of those PDF files here. So you can easily populate them and edit if you want to. For instance, all the PDF file we have from desktop, I can just select all of them and plug all of them in here. Okay, now you see, as I send the PDF file here, it doesn't disappear in the desktop. Why? Because the desktop is a different drive, as we saw from here. The desktop is a different drive, and this is a different drive. So whenever you copy your files and import them to this particular drive based on the folder, all you need to do is to delete the one in the desktop, and you are good to go. Okay, so now we get to the next. I have my projects. Here is all my logo projects. I have all of them in this folder. So I don't have things scattered everywhere. Though recently I do not submit my projects in the local drive anymore. I, I upload them in Google Drive. So I have all my projects uploaded in my Google Drive. Even more of my projects have been uploaded in my Google Drive. So now after that, we get to the system applications. So here is where you see my Adobe installation files. Okay, and my applications for most recent uh, updates, these are most important applications that I install immediately I format a PC, okay? I have talked about most of these applications in my previous videos. You can go watch them out and see the importance and the rules they play to setting up your PC. Now, here are my fonts in case I have also made a video on how to install fonts in one click. You can find that video and watch. So, in case I install, down, uh, format my PC, I just drag in my font, plug them in, everything starts happening. And here is the icons we are going to be using for what we are be doing today. And here is the PSD for my most recent projects, or kind of PSD from the new PC I just formatted. This is the basic PSD that I would need to start up or to kick off. Then after that, you see the system applications. Remember, we are in the system application location. So this PSD is not supposed to be here. Usually, this is supposed to be moved out. Why you find this here is because I just formatted this PC and I don't have those settings and I'm just trying to set this up. All these files, we are imported through my flash drive. So after now, I'm going to be organizing them and placing them where they belong. But for now, let's assume they are in the system application. After that, you see the web content. Here is where I see the website I've done for most of my clients. These are old uh, files and based on how you want this to be organized okay how you want it to be organized this is just what we need so once you organize your file for instance the desktop in the desktop location how i organize my file is this 
I have a desktop folder also where I plug in everything that will make the desktop look tattered and dirty. I just drag all of them and place in the desktop. So at the end of the week, I will extract all of this file here and place them in the designated folder where they belong. And it's easy for me that way. Okay, whatever works for you, you are good to go. And for this recycle bin, we'll be dealing with it after now when we actually create our own recycle bin in a, in a couple of moments. So those are basic things you need to know to start up. Now we have understand what to do to start up. Let's get into what creating this particular application. So click on this. You're going to find, I'll be sending you the link. You're going to download it or also send you the file in case the link is not no more working because it's been ages when I visited that link. So system application and the name of the file is called rocket doc it should be around here are ah, very good. So it's in a zip file. You need to unzip it. So once it's unzipped, we can extract it to the desktop if you want to, or you double click it from inside there for it to install. So enable this. Okay. Okay. Agree and accept. Okay. Okay. Create desktop icon. We don't need that. Next install and we are good to go just allow it to install before you close this so it's finished installing very quick and we can close this down we are done with the basics okay these are the basic thing you need to do but that's not all next thing you need to do is to get into your windows okay get into your windows go to local file okay go to program file that says x86 uh, if you're using 64 bits you should be this should be 32 bits if you're using 64 bit this is where it should be but usually it's here so click on this because the rocket dock is supported for uh 32 bit pc so you're gonna see it somewhere here rocket dock usually is it called rocket dock or common file okay let's check that from um let's check that from common files can find it here okay 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 fine we found it here very good so click on rocket dock open on it and open this place it says icon select on all of the icon and delete it this is the default icon it, icon it comes with but before we delete it let's open rocket dock and see what it looks like so to open it go to start click on the start area and find the rocket dot it should be in the recently installed uh application just click on it you see very beautiful so one thing you need to do is to right click. If you like it to be at the top, okay. If you like it to be at the bottom, it's okay. Anywhere you want it to be. But for me, I like it to be positioned to the right. Fine, I have it to this area. So these are those icons, as you can see from here, these are all of those icons we have, okay? So what we need to do, we want to delete and remove all of these icons. So select on all of these and delete them. You continue, we are good to go. Enable this for all, just continue to clear off all of those icons. Okay, that's what we need to do. Next thing we need to do is to go to the icon. I'll be providing you these icons we have here with the link will be in the description of this video. Okay, you can import the icon. You can also download your own icon. I'm going to show you how to download your own icons. So select on this icon, select all of them and drag all of them here. There are about 21 of them. Okay, fine. So these are basic things. These are the basic settings we need to do. You can close down this and close down this. So now let's get in and do our styling for our rocket dock. So first thing you need to do, you want this to always open automatically whenever you boot on your PC. So let's go to our general settings. I think that should be around these icon settings. Let's find, uh, okay, dock settings. This is the general settings, the dock settings. Okay, so let's start from the beginning to do all settings. Languages, you can leave it at English. Okay, run at startup. This is the option I've just talked about. So whenever you on your PC, it's going to actually open. Okay, uh, store settings for portable I N I singular user. Forget about that. Minimum minimize window to the dock. Forget about this. We don't need it. Run application indicator. Forget about that. Open running application instance. Forget about it. Now let me explain what this means. Okay, minimizing windows to the dock means whenever you minimize your window screen it goes to the dock you're gonna find it the window screen to the dock here we don't need that running application indicator means if an application you plug in the icon in case i want this application let me show you what it means anyway let's scroll down till we find uh let's find uh this zd recorder okay so we drag in this icon and we place it here let's place it here 
fine, fine. So now this application, whenever, if we enable this option that says run application indicator, when this application is on, you will see an indication that the application is actually running. You see that indication, that dot at the, at the back side, that's an indi indicator, okay? When you turn that off, that indicator goes off. You can style the indicator to be a dot, a dot at the front side, a green dot blinking or whatever. So you can still play around with that. You can see some of the settings from that indicator in the later part of this. Open running application instance. Forget about this. Lock items. Forget about this. We are going to lock the item when we are done with all our design. Now, why you lock item is so that someone visits your PC. They don't need to just drag out your content and delete it. Let me show you what that means. So somebody can just delete your applications or your created instances here, but these are not actually deleting the folders. These are deleting the shortcuts to the icons that leads to the folders. So which means all of these things here are not actually your files. They are links to your files. So if, if it is deleted, you can actually place it back without stress. So let's get back to our doc settings. So if we get to the next one, which is the icons, we can select what quality we want. Usually I want it to be on highest quality. The opacity allow it to be that. Zoom opaque you leave it at that the size of this icon you can de increase or decrease it whatever size you want i usually leave mine at 16 pixels depending on your screen size you will need to play around with that now the zoom option is whenever you hover on this how it zooms on each of the application you hover your cursor is hovering on so you can either make it on flats just make everything like this or make it on zoom just play around but don't be do, don't do it too much don't play around too much just make it subtle i like this option now this is the, the 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 zoom intensity okay so in case you don't want it to be too much in case you want it to be too much you see okay in case you don't want it to be too much i like mine to be very subtle so i stay around 20 pixels and thereabouts so since i indicate the, since the text indicates the icon I'm on, I'm on, I think it is okay for me like this. So the zoom width also, you can play around with that, increase the zoom width, which is the, the how it spreads out the contents. You know, the, it's assuming like two icons are open now, that is the zoom width. But if you reduce the zoom width, it's one of the icon is going to actually represent on its hover. But if you increase the zoom width, many icons can show up as if they are zooming on their own just on that one zoom so usually i like it to be just one icon i want to hover on the zoom duration is how long it takes for that particular that particular effect to take place you see it is soft now it's more softer you get the point and is faster now okay so you know which one you like best i like it to be at 180 millisecond now after that we need to go to styler have we done position? Okay, we have not done position. So position, the first one, leave it at that screen position. We want it to be right. We already did that. Always on top. What this means is this. When we put this always on button, when we open our application, the appli the, this particular application we created will be on top of every application we are actually dealing on. But when we place it always on, always on button, it's always be on the back side of each application we open. Whenever we open any application, it be on the back side. Okay, so enable this and make it always on bottom. We are not going to see that effect until we click on OK. So let's click on OK and open an application again. You see it? Very good. So now most settings, you just need to uh, uh, save them before they apply. Get back to that and we get to positioning. Always on bottom, enable that. Centering is enabled. Uh, age offset, leave this as they are. You can still play around them and see how they work. Now in the styling, I like to use the empty one for this particular styling area. I like to use blank so that anything, nothing will show there. But some persons will like to choose uh, whichever one you want. You can use on the arrow. You can play with this. You can use this. You can use milk. You can use uh, paint. You can, you can just play around with all the options. There is one op other option I like. So much that strokes all around. That strokes around, but it's not this one. So, but I like the blank one. I like the blank one because it's more, uh, very good. This is the one I'm, I was talking about, the seamless one, how it's very slicky and just flat, but I still prefer my blank. So I'm good to go with that. You can get more styles from here. Clicking on this, they will take you to their website. You can choose more. Those are for free. Disable icon label. This means that the 
text that are showing what icon this is will disappear. So if you know your icon, you can disable this to have a more subtle and more unique uh, interface. But I think that is okay for me to enable. Okay, so you can do some font settings here. Change your font. Do play around with some of the things here. I don't need to go around or everything. Outline opacity. Okay, this is for outline. Those particular style that have outline. That is this where you do the opacity, do the shadows and all of that. So this is it for this one. Then we get to behavior. How do you want it to behave when so when you click on an icon? As for instance, I click on this icon, it will bounce. Okay, this is auto hide. Don't enable this. Just forget about this. Okay, when you enable auto hide, this particular element will automatically hide itself until you hover on it. Okay, I just don't like that interaction. But if you like it, you're good to go. I just had to show you all of these settings all at once. I just don't like it. I like it to show in there because I like my icon so beautiful and like everywhere here to be off. So auto hide is disabled. Pop up on mouse. Okay, that is when you enable this up auto hide. When we enable this to look what happens. It pops up. I wonder why that option is there because it usually pops up on hover from the auto hide even when this is not enabled. So just that. So we are done with the basic settings. These are the basic settings and we are good to go. Okay. Okay. That auto hide was enabled. So we are going to go back and disable it. Okay. So now the next thing we need to do is start adding our cards or start adding our folders. Remember the folders we I actually talked about earlier before now this folder so first of all i want to add my main folder which is this one so i drag the folder and place it make don't place it on another folder like this make sure there is a space created first before you drop it in okay then you can close on that one we have placed the main folder in and if you want to separate areas like for instance we have a separate area this will be for folders and this will be for my uh, files and delete files and what I used to work with, like my Chrome and other uh, files I need to be here. Okay, but this one will be for only files, documents, Photoshop files, my logo designs and all of that. So I have to separation, you usually have to separation. So make sure you place elements in the top side, which elements you want and elements in the bottom side, whichever element you want. So I've placed the first element, which is mine. The next element is my ad design. I usually like this to be my Kata Studios, but let's just add ad design as a second uh, content. The third content is my mockups. I would like to add just the mockup because I don't even want to separate the two mockups. So if I click on the mockup, it will populate just the mockup file for me. So the next one, PDF, I don't need the PDF to be here. I usually hardly visit that. So files you hardly visit, just avoid them. Just place content here. But if you want to place them, you are good to go. So the project, I don't, I don't visit this anymore. Like I said, I now save my project in my Google Cloud storage. So system application will go down here, down somewhere here. So we have to delete this, delete this, delete this. So we have first stage and second stage. System application, we have to stay above this other one. Okay, so all application will be beneath here. I don't need this one. So we have the, the recycle bin is very important. Website content, we don't need it. Thumbnails, I usually have my YouTube thumbnail so that whenever I create a video, I just click on it and click on the, LM, uh, the uh, P, PSD file and edit. So we are good to go. We are just good to go. These are just icons or content I will like to be in my desktop. Nothing more, nothing too busy. I like this to be more, I like to place more. Uh, settings here, positioning, styling, let's go to icon opacity, icon size, increase a little, zoom effect, increase a little, fine, I just like it like this now. So we are done with the third stage, the third stage is adding our elements, we have added it, now let's change the icons to match what we want. Now you can delete all of these things, remember we now have a recycle bin here. Okay, we have recycle bin here. So we don't need this recycle bin from here. How do we remove it? You can't delete this recycle bin. You can, you can empty recycle bin. Emptying recycle bin means emptying the content inside. It's still the same thing working from here. If you click on option from this right corner, if you click an option from this right corner and say empty recycle bin. So we have the same option we have from here in this particular one. So what we need to do now is very simple. We have to remove this particular recycle bin. How do you do that? On Windows 10 or above, all you need to do is click on option, click on personalize, click on team. Okay, when you click on team, scroll down till you find, uh, where is that? I think, uh, okay, desktop icon from here. Click on that 
and you're gonna find it, find it here. All the desktop icons you find, you can disable it here. You see, once you disable it and click on apply, automatically that recycle bin disappears. And we click on okay, and we are good to go. Now we are done the best and the best that we can do. Next thing we need to do, we need to lock this thing so that somebody dragging this out will not delete the app. We can lock it from the settings and we can also lock it from here, right click and hover on uh, auto hide, no, lock item, okay? So enable that. So now we lock the item, we can no longer delete it. You get the point until we come back here to unlock it. Okay, so now we've locked it. Let's now start doing our settings. Our mind, my mind, I would like to do change the icon. So right click on the icon, click on icon settings. Now you see we have two settings. One is the general settings and one is the specific settings for the icon. Select on that and I want mine to be a building because it's usually a kind of reference, referencing that this is where the house, where everything belongs to. You can download more icon. I'm going to show you how to do that in a little while. The ad design, I would like it to be uh let's just play around with another content let's choose this one is it too ambiguous i had some other icons before now now i lost all my icons so this one is for uh what's mock-ups so i like to use this as my mock-up icon so having two boxes here i'm not very convinced and satisfied with that but let's just proceed system application i usually use this icon for the system application this ugly one and uh, okay and this particular screen recorder you can use a screen recorder icon let's use uh let's go to youtube uh, we don't even have a youtube icon from here so i think we have to if you have a music you can use this one a music icon can you so let's use that youtube this music one for now then recycle bin we can go to settings icon settings and we can choose whichever recycle bin we want from here i usually like this but if you like this you can choose it too so click on OK. Now let's get back to download our icon. To download icon, click on option from here and we are going to find the icon. I'm going to also provide the icon link for you in the description below. Okay. So it is a flaticon.com slash free slash icon slash gradients. Okay. So let's actually find a YouTube icon. So we can use it to replace the other one. So I think I like this one, whichever one you think is preferable. Some people would like to go with circle icons, whichever one you want to go with. Okay. I would like this one over here. So I'm going to download it and I'm going to download it in PNG free and wait for a little while. Why are you asking me this? I am a human. A robot is asking me if I am a human. So we click on okay and the file is downloaded. Okay, so we have the YouTube icon downloaded, but let's download another file. Let's download for this ad design and also for screen recorder. So let's search for recorder. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. I like this one. This is very simple and straight to the point. Download. And we are good to go. That recorder is a goal. I usually, okay, I still think it's okay. Let's find for, um, let's find another beautiful icon for this ad designs. Let's see. You can use whatever icon you feel is comfortable for you, or comfortable enough for you to use. You see these icons are, can scroll down. I think this is cool. Okay, let's use this Photoshop icon. I think this works well. You know, since all of the contents we are also actually working on from there will mostly be for Photoshop. So I think for ad design, Photoshop will work well. So once we are done with getting them, just open on this area. These icons will include in the ones I'll be sending to you guys. Okay, so don't bother downloading them again. So we're going to go back here, go back to this and find our rocket dog, go to icon and drag all of this icon and place them in here. Okay. Fine. We are good to go. So go back to this plus, go to the icon and we are going to set for the recorder. Very beautiful. I love that. So the ad design, we are going to set for Photoshop. Here is it? Very cool. I like the way it blends with the background. And for the YouTube thumbnail, I think we need to select on the YouTube icon and we are good to go. This is beautiful. 
this is beautiful this is beautiful so now let's test that our work and see if everything works out well so recycle bin we click on it it opens the recycle bin the youtube thumbnails we click on it you find it recording tool it starts recording this is the recording we are doing right now the system application we have it there the mock-up files we have it the psd ad designs we have all of that and the mine we have everything which is the the whole folder for it so in case you can't find most of the things you are looking for here like you didn't add them you can possibly click on the mine and get to hold everything without stressing yourself so that is it guys on how to set up your desktop and for this it's now easy for you to now add content you can just drag in this particular element to the anyone you want here and it will actually get into that one if you in case you want to edit finish doing a design just drag them to where they belong to don't let it scatter all over here for a creative mind you need to be organized and you don't need to stress yourself or stress your vision your mind so that your mind will be more streamlined to the design you're actually trying to create once again my name is Manu from Kata Studios if you enjoyed this video try to share to a friend who need to know about it and comment if you have any question to ask about this and if there's anything I'm forgetting let me know in the comment section below subscribe if you have not subscribed if you have time if you don't have time I think we'll meet next time. Do have a wonderful day.